If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. It can't be progressive revelation on the nature of Hashem. He is one and there's only one. Shema Yisrael Adinoi Leheinu Adinoi Echad. There's one. There's nothing else. Anyone who does progressive, meaning something different, that's why Terry says kill him. Hi, uh, William and uh, Rabbi Singer. Uh, my name is Jay. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, my question, Rabbi, is uh, you said uh, don't walk, run from the progressive revelation claims. And uh, I'm a non-Mormon student of Brigham Young University in Idaho. And so I tend to agree very, very strongly with that. Uh, while I love Mormon believers, uh, almost nothing uh, is reviled by me more than their religion. And the same is, of course, true for Islam. But a, a Baptist pastor in Missouri that I've known for years claims that even in the Tanakh, there's a certain degree of progressive revelation. There were, uh, firstly, the commands to Adam and Eve in Eden, and then there were the seven commands to Noah and his descendants, and then the Torah to Moses, and then uh, the prophets were revealed more things later, and then things specific to the temple. Uh, what would your response to that be? Uh, thank you so much. All right. Really? That's a good question. Years ago, I debated, um, I think, the, oh, by far the most skilled Christian apologist in the English-speaking world, William Lane Craig. We were debating the doctrine of the Trinity. Never forget that. And he and I said that this core doctrine of the church is found is nowhere to be found in the Hebrew Bible. There's nothing not only is there nothing resembling it in the Jewish scriptures, but in fact the prophets of Israel attacked that doctrine explicitly, that there cannot be anyone but God. There's no one before, there's no one besides me. I am the first, I'm the last, there is I mean, if people would just read Isaiah 43, just half as much as they read Isaiah 53, they wouldn't be in the church. It's just that simple. If you care, and you're watching this, it's not because there's nothing else to watch out there. It means you care. So if you just read Isaiah 40 through 60, just read it all. Just read it all. Don't leave anything out. You will you're not going to stay in the church. Because Tanakh is so explicit, so clear that there's one God, there's no one else besides him. There's no one else. Ephes Komoni, Isaiah 46, verse 9. And Christians argue then, well, there's a progressive revelation and striking. Progressive revelation means there's an ongoing revelation. That this should come from a Protestant is mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Do you, do you understand why? Because the Protestants are claiming sola scriptura, which is mind-blowing. That means the, the, the core reason why Protestants reject the Roman Catholic iteration of Christianity is because they reject the ecumenical authority of Rome. There are thousands of iterations of Protestant Christianity. What they all share in common is they reject the authority of the Bishop of Rome. That's the, there are many different views within Protestant Christianity, all sorts of things, of the, of the nature of the communion, of the host, of the Eucharist, of the veneration of Mary, the real presence. Don't ask. It's all over the place. But the one thing they definitely reject is that there can be any newer revelation by the church. That's the whole point of it. And then to say this progressive revelation, do you know how you know how damaged that is? How um, spiritually promiscuous that is? Do you have any clue? Then why reject the the Church of the Latter Day Saints? I mean, they could argue there's been progressive revelation. The very claim by Protestants that Mormonism, that the Mormon Church or Mormons, 
worship a false iteration of Christianity, or it's not Christianity at all, is because it rejects the the plain text of the Bible. That's the whole point. But there's no equal weights in measurements. I mean, why not then apply that same stand, that same rigorous standard to the Mormons, which you won't do that. It's only if it's an our version of Christianity does it work. Now, to your question, what is progressive revelation? So what we have to do is define our terms. Progressive revelation means that there can be a new nature of God. That's what it means. That can never change. God says, I will not change. Please read Isaiah 44, 45, 46. I mean, if you really are lazy and you have to watch the movie, then read the book. If you re- I'm I don't. But if you really just read Isaiah 44 through 46, just try that. Try it out. Try it out. And then you'll immediately cancel your membership to your church. Immediately. Immediately. Please don't believe me. Please don't. Just read it for yourself. So what cannot progress is the nature of God. That cannot change. And God says he's immutable. He will not change. He will not change his mind. So therefore, we worship the same God that Noah worshiped. Doctrine cannot change, can never change. Now, now let's talk about Mashiach. So Mashiach is predicted in the Torah, although it's, I'll tell you why, but for now, so you know, it's only a couple of times uh, where Mashiach is mentioned. I don't, the word inferred is not the right term. So we have the fourth oracle of Bilam in Numbers chapter 24, 17. You have um, Genesis 49, verse 10. But why isn't there in the book of Joshua all this about Mashiach, Mashiach? Well, the reason is that there's something critical that had to happen. What? <laughs> the Jews had to, the Bnei Israel, the children of Israel, had to say that we want a king, and a king had to be appointed. And that king had to be David, the Davidic king, thus fulfilling the promise that God made to Judah through Jacob, which are considered blessings, but they're really promises about a tribe that had a unique character. Judah was not perfect. But he displayed leadership abilities. The greatest or most elaborate blessings were given to him. But there's something critical that had to happen. That is, the people had to say, we want a king. The whole point of the book of Judges is that the the people of Israel realize that this loose confederacy of tribes with a judge who is not really a monarch, didn't have that kind of power, that's just not going to work. Okay, so Shmuel begins with, we need a king, and ultimately it comes to David. And once it comes to David, it can never be taken away from him, Davidic covenant. So once we have a Davidic covenant, okay, let's now talk about Mashiach. That's not a revelation and doctrine of the nature of God. That's, okay, now you're here and you're going to go into the land. We need to talk about what you're going to do when you go there. That's not doctrine. There can't be. The Torah says X explicitly. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. You can't add to the Torah, no, take away from it. It means in doctrine. Now, when, of course, when the children of Israel are about to go across the Jordan opposite Jericho, they're then given information about this, the new circumstance they're going to confront. But there's no new commandment in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah would have been put to death in a second if he would have expressed even one new mitzvah. There's no new commandment in the book of Jeremiah or Ezekiel or Joel. There can't be. So the nature of God is one. In fact, there is no oneness like HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The can, Hashem will share his glory with no one. I mean, just read Deuteronomy 4. If you read Deuteronomy 4, you're canceling your membership to any church. Just read it from beginning to end. Please, just read it for yourself. It was attended for that. So what happened is, what what is conflated is, of course, we have information about things that are going to happen because of a new circumstance. Oh, the children of Israel have chosen to have a king. 
okay, so let me tell you about that. Now, really, it's not new because if we go back to the Torah. The Torah says that if the Jewish people will say, we want a king like other nations, so seistosis. It's really in the Torah. It's, that's not new either. Should I give you a little more, something a little more delicious here? I'll just layer it in and we'll go on. Just one piece. So the Torah says, if the people of Israel will say, let us have a king like other nations, so give them a king. So this will help you understand. So that's a little weird. And this bothered Samuel too. The Jews said, we want a king like other nations. Why do you have to have like other nations? What's going on here? And it's, there's something... Not right. Why should we want to imitate other nations? After all, the Torah warns us, don't be like the nations of the world. Don't imitate them. You shouldn't go in the way of the nations around you, right? Don't imitate Goyim. So what is happening here? Why does it say we will want a king like other nations? Why can't it just say, we want a king? What does the Torah mean? So this is deep. This is hot. This is smoking hot. If you're able to, to remove your shoes now, we can go high. Very high. It's this so high. Mamish so delicious. Mamish mili malisa. So if the Jewish people will say, give us a king like other nations have a king, what are the, what are the people saying? The, the people are saying, in other words, we're messed up. We're damaged. And if you read the book of Judges, you can see how messed up we are. Because the book of Judges essentially covers a large period of time. It's not like everyone was nuts. But it's essentially highlighting every stupidity that was conducted by the children of Israel. Okay? So if the children of Israel say we want a king more like other nations, that means you're sick. You need to get to a hospital. And who's the chief doctor at the hospital? It's the king. That means you really do need a David. You understand what's going on? You, king David was not just a political leader. He was the God Lader. He was the leader, the giant of the generation. He's author, the primary author of the Book of Psalms. That means if somebody says, I need a king because like other nations have a king, that means there's something wrong with you. That means you need help. You need a, you need a chief rabbi who's a king. It means you really do need a king because you, you need a doctor because you're a little sick. If you say such a thing, that let's imitate the nation. Really, you know, my friends, why do I tell you this? First of all, I want to fill you with Terry. Number two is I, I really want to, I want you to step into the Holy of Holies and realize that when you read something in Tanakh that you don't understand, like why is it there? There's not one word. There's not one extra letter in Tanakh. Nothing. Every word is holy. Every word is... If you, I have, and I still, there's verses or words, I'm not sure why it's there. It's extra. And I say, Hashem, please help me understand this pasuk, this word, this letter. If there's a letter in Tanakh you don't know, hey, beg Hashem for wisdom. And he said, that's what's going on. It can't be progressive revelation on the nature of Hashem. He is one and there's only one. Shema Yisrael, Adinoi Leheinu, Adinoi Echad. There's one. There's nothing else. No one. They can't. Anyone who does progressive mean something different? That's why Terry says kill him. What does the Terry say in Deuteronomy chapter 13? If in Parshish Ray, if a if a prophet, a dreamer dreams, does miracle signs of one, he says, follow God, your fathers didn't know, kill him. He's not, I didn't send him. I was doing miracles. I'm testing you. So there it is. It's baked in. The fail-safe system is built in. That means if anyone says it changed, kill him. He's a liar, he's a shakran, the shek of a chazov. It's built in. No one can change it. Thank you for your question. If you enjoy these programs, please like and subscribe. אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נועד